Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be giving you a review on the 2021 propane tyre. This is my custom aluminium one, but I'll be showing you all the logistics of it and how good I think it really is. So let's get straight into it. So the propane tyre is an enduro bike made for racing, downhill and free ride. You've got 170 millimeters to travel up front and 160 millimeters to travel out of the back. It comes in 27 and a half inch wheel sizes and 29 inch wheels. This here is a 27 and a half inch. Frame comes in small, medium, large, and extra large, and this frame that I've got here is a size medium. So I'll firstly go over how the pricing and the delivery of the propane tyre was, and then we'll get into more of the actual bike riding stuff. So the pricing is probably one of the best pricings you're going to find that on any mountain bike. So the value for money, I've got all of this bike here for about 3,200, including shipping. The good thing about propane is you get to spec all of the bike exactly how you want it on their website. So you get to use your handlebars, your stem, your forks, your wheels. Basically everything you get to choose it from scratch on their website. So that means you're going to be able to budget your bike really well to get all the parts you definitely want. And then once you've ordered it, the delivery is not so great. So it took my bike about seven months to come. Firstly, they said it was going to take five months and then there's a delay because of Brexit. And then it ended up coming about seven months after I ordered it. Out of the box, the bike was really easy to build. All I had to do was put on my derailleur hanger and the derailleur was already attached to it and then put on my stem, pump out the suspension and then I was basically ready to go. The packaging of the bike was done really well. The box was big enough to fit the whole bike in when it was disassembled. That means that there was no parts rubbing against each other and scratching each other before you even get the bike out of the box. There was foam wrapped around the frame to stop any scratches and there was also foam around certain parts of the bike like the forks and the cranks just to keep them extra bits even more protected. My first impressions of the bike when I got it out of the box was the quality of the frame seems really good. These tubes are really thick so they should be strong on jumps and stuff. But obviously because this is an aluminium frame instead of the carbon one that they also offer, this one is slightly heavier. So this bike comes in at about 16 kilograms which isn't very light for an enduro bike at all. Alright we're now going to move on to the actual ride and review of the bike now. So my first impressions of the bike when I'd done my first ever ride on it was but considering how heavy it is and how much suspension it's actually got, this bike feels really playful. The chain stays feel really short to do jibs and stuff like manuals and wheelies, whatever, but they also feel stable on the downhill and tech stuff. The chain stays aren't short actually in comparison to other bikes, they're actually probably longer, but for some reason how the bike's designed, they just feel short and playful. Right, so now I'm going to move on to the jumping side of this bike. The main thing I do on the propane tyre is obviously doing jumps. The bike feels really playful mid-air, also feels stable. And the bike also allows you to pump the takeoffs and the landings to gain more speed when you're on a jump trail. I used to have a Canyon Spectral that had about 160mm travel up front and 150 at the rear. And it was about a kilo and a half lighter. And I actually find the propane tyre a lot more playful mid-air and on the ground. So if you're worried about playfulness when you're buying a bike, this one definitely has a lot of play. The only thing I would say that's bad about this bike is that sometimes the seat can be a tiny bit too high. Like, say if I'm trying to do a table or a whip mid-air, sometimes I feel the seat there and it's a bit annoying. But the way you can fix this is, instead of buying one on a dropper post that you get off the propane website, buy like a one-up dropper post because they have a really thin stack and then the seat will go even lower. Right, so how does the propane tyre do in the corners? Right, so I chose the Schwalbe Magic Mary tyre up front and the Schwalbe Big Betty at the back. They're obviously both 27 and a half inch wheels, but in the corners, this bike I find has a lot of grip. The tyres are really meaty, they have a lot of grip on them anyway. But I feel like the weight of the bike, which could be a disadvantage on the climbing, is actually an advantage when you're cornering. The bike feels more planted when you're going through corners because of the weight, and if there's roots or anything, or rocks or whatever in the corners, the bike sort of just skips over them rather than bouncing through them. Also, the suspension design, which is called the Pro 10, made specifically by Propane, gives you a lot of traction when you're going around corners. It's nice and progressive. You feel like you have lots of mid-stroke support when you're proper railing corners, but the small bump sensitivity seals are really good on the roots and there's a lot of bottom out support when you land on big jumps and stuff. I don't really have any negative things to say about the propane tyre when it's cornering. It just feels really grippy and planted, as I said. Right, now let's move on to the tech and the steep stuff when it comes to riding it on the propane tyre. So the propane has a longer wheelbase on my old Canyon Spectral and I rode the Canyon Spectral on the Lenza Hider Downhill World Cup. The Canyon Spectral felt very capable on that so I can only suppose that this is going to feel even more planted and more stable. But from my own experience on riding this bike on steep stuff, I've ridden it at Surrey and Woburn and stuff. And the bike just feels planted once again. As I say, if there's roots or rocks as you're going down a steep section, bike tends to just skip over it then bouncing through the rocks and roots and I'd say that's partly to do with again the suspension design on the rear and the weight of the frame that keeps you planted. 
Also, as I did say earlier, the chainsaws feel quite short when you're playing with them, like they feel very playful. But when you're going on the downhill in the tech, it still feels really stable somehow. Only problem I can say about the propane tire on the steep stuff is once again, this seat height. Sometimes you feel like you need to get over it a tiny bit more just to reach back a bit more. But yeah, there's an obvious fix to that, which is to get a lower stack dropper post. Round tight corners as well, because the propane tire is playful mid-air, you can probably suspect it's gonna be playful on the ground too. So if you're trying to get around like a hairpin turn, for example, it's quite easy to just pick up the back wheel and place it around the other side of the corner. So it's not too hard, you don't have to like lorry drive it around the corner. You can sort of just place it back around and carry on. One thing a lot of people might be thinking about when you're buying a propane tire is how does it climb? Because obviously it is an enduro bike, it's made for going uphill as well as downhill. I can't say it's the best climber, it definitely gets you to the top of the trail, but because of the weight of the aluminium frame, it feels quite heavy sometimes. Sometimes I feel like I need to lock out the coil shock just because this suspension bobs quite a bit when you're standing up and pedalling. But when you're actually sitting down on the saddle and pedaling up a hill, it doesn't bob really too much at all. It all sort of depends on what sort of position you're riding in when you're climbing up a hill. The only downside I would say to this bike is the, obviously the weight of it when you're going up a hill. Also, sometimes if you're going up a really steep hill, the front wheel tends to sometimes lift up a little bit. But yeah, the weight of the bike and sometimes how you end up doing a wheelie up a hill is a con of this bike. The pros of it when you're climbing is it gets you to the top. Right, moving on to the suspension of this bike. As I said, it's got 170mm travel up front and 160mm at the rear. The suspension design is for Pro 10 and it was designed specifically by Propane for Propane bikes. And there's about five to six pivots. I can't actually count them all because I don't know if they actually all are pivots, but there's roughly five to six. And basically the chainsaw and the seat stay both push the shock from the top and above. And the whole design of it is it's meant to give you really good small bump sensitivity, but also be really progressive. It's probably one of the most progressive bikes I've actually ever ridden. And that's why I chose to run a coil shock, because coil shock by themselves are linear, air shock's progressive. So I thought a progressive suspension design with a linear coil shock is going to make it feel slightly more supple, but ramp up nicely as well. And that actually did end up becoming true. I get really good small bump sensitivity with this coil shock. And I also find that it ramps up really nicely in corners with mid-stroke support and also when you're landing on jumps, it doesn't bottom out. And up the front, I find that the head angle is placed really nicely, so the forks hit all the bumps before you actually hit them. They absorb the bumps nicely. And the front and the back wheels just feel like they've got lots of traction and stick to the ground nicely over roots and rocks and bumps. Right, so overall, the propane tire is a great bike that works well on jumps, tech, downhill corners, doing jibs. It's really playful. The only downside to it is on climbs, it's not the greatest, it's quite heavy and you also find that your front wheel ends up doing wheelies by itself. Another con to this bike is obviously the delivery times. Mine took seven months, but I've heard even worse delivery times. I've heard some people have an estimated delivery time of up to a year. But if you can persevere with the long wait times of the propane bikes, I think you'll find that you actually end up loving the bike. It works really well on every sort of trail. It's a really versatile bike and you get really good value for money on it. Anyway guys, that is the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed this today. If you do want to watch another video of mine, click on the top right hand of your screen right now. Anyway, I'll see you next week.